So this week is Parshas Vayeschanan, and we have many mitzvahs to choose from, but every year after Tisha B'Av, I think it's very important to talk about the mitzvah Venishmartem Ma'oid Lenafshri Seichem. It's Bein Azmanim. Yeshiva's close. Thousands, tens of thousands of young yeshiva boys, B'nai Taira, are in Chafesh vacationing. And to our horrible dismay, every year we lose young kids. Every year, Bochem die. Drowning, dehydration, car accidents. It is beyond me. How is it possible that people that are medactic be mitzvahs, kale kivichamuro, they steer a thousand miles clear from cheshash chilul Shabbos, aveda biyoyim akipurim. And how come they're not careful at all with a mitzvah that overrides Shabbos and overrides Yom Kippur? Venishmartem ma'oid lenav shiseich. So let's start with the fundamentals of this mitzvah. Many sources in Shas, we learn that a person is not allowed to put his life in jeopardy. Brochus Lamed Beis, Omed Beis, Shabbos Lamed Beis, Omed Alef, Tanes, Daf Chof, Avod Yezor, Daf Yud Beis, and many other sources in Shas. Shulchan Och, Yeredei Akuf Tezayin, Yeredei Akuf Ayin Tez, Choshu Mishpatov Chof Zayin. The only simon that we find in Shulchan Och, we don't find in the tour. Tur finishes off Tov Chavav. The Bess Yosef adds on another simon to the Shulchan Aruch. Many is Hasakon. And we find this mitzvah in two different variations. Bakum Vasei B'Shev Al Taisa. In mitzvah Smaka, we learn that you need to initiate. You need to do Maisim. You need to be proactive to prevent Sakona. If you have a roof and people go up on that roof, you need to build a rail. You need to build a safe rail. That is the mitzvah of Micah. Kum va'asei. But in many sugis we learn you need to steer clear from Sekona and don't put your life in danger. What is the source of this mitzvah? Two sources, both in this week's parsha. And I want to note an interesting point. In no other mitzvah do we find the word ma'oid. Ma'oid is emphasis. Not only be careful, be very, very careful. No other mitzvah do we find ma'oid. And in both psukim that I quoted, hishom alachovish mo'enafshechu ma'oid, v'neshmarte ma'oid le'nafsho yisechem. These psukim are the source of Shmira Saguf v'ha nefesh. In Chazal, it's in Baruch Islam at Beis, um at Beis, Masa b'chosed echa. A chosed stood in Davind. He was in the middle of praying. And a very important personality, a non-Jewish minister, said hello. And the Jew did not respond because he was in the middle of davening. And that non-Jewish minister patiently waits. And by the time the Jew finishes davening, he asks him, It is in your Torah, it's in your Bible that the Pesach says, And you don't practice what you preach. If I would cut off your head with a sword, nobody would demand your blood. How do you dare not to respond when I say hello? And the Chosid answers with a mushal. Dear minister, if you would be speaking to the king and I would ask, say hello to you, would you respond? And the minister says, of course not. When you have an appointment with the king, and the king talks to you, you do not respond to anyone else. So the chassar says, and I was talking to the king of kings, and I was talking to Melech Malchi Amloch HaMakodesh Bochu. So the chassar was lucky, and the minister accepted his argument. The marshal on the spot says, that's a non-Jewish cup. 
the Pesach has nothing to do with putting your life in jeopardy. The Pesach speaks in Ruchnius. And if Ipshuto Yishol Mikra, the Mishor is definitely right. Let's have a look at the Psukim. Rak Hashom Rachov Yishmoi Nafshech Omoid Pen Tishka Chesed Vora Masharo Enecho Vepen Yasiru Min Levav Chok Kol Yemecho Yecho Voi Datum Levo Necho Velevnei Vonecho Never forget Mamed Har Sinai. Never forget what you witnessed, what you saw. And pass it over to your children and to your children's children. That is Mamed Har Sinai. And then the Pesach goes on. V'nishmartem o'y denaf shesechim ki lorisem kol t'muna b'yoyim dibre Hashem elakechem b'choyre mitoy ho'eish. Pen tashchisem v'asisem lochem pesel kol t'muna. So the Masho is right. Both these psukim deal with the Vedas Zora, they deal with Ruchnias. They deal with the Neshama and not the Nefesh. With the soul and not your life. That's the Masho's argument. The Mashu is right, but the Mashu is not right because the Rambam and Perik Yud Aleph and Herchas Yitzchak and in Sefer Mitzvahs quotes these very psukim as the source of Meniyas Asakana. So we must assume, yes, it is the Goyish minister that quoted these psukim, but it's a Gemara at the end of the day. Maybe that minister said many different things and Chazal don't quote. Chazal wouldn't quote everything that a Goy says. And if Chazal quote this statement, it's no longer a Goyish minister, it's a Gemara. And the Rambam brings these psuk. However, one could argue, maybe it's just an asmachta. And the Meshua is right once again. Pshutan shel dvorim, it's diuraisa. And a minchasosha pashas veschana minchasosha aratayra. I brought sources from the Poiskim. It's a mitzvah diuraisa. So why is this the Rambam right? Har bedvorim osru chachomim mishum sakona. V'oever aleya makano isa makas mardus. Makas mardus is only by the Rabbonon. Elav diuraisa malkas arboam chosarachas. No. It is menatayra to prevent the loss of life. Actively, passively, but it is impossible to clearly define the level of sakana, which is a prohibition. And I made it clear in many shiurim and many, many opportunities, in many shiurim I said, it is impossible to define sakana. Masam b'chol yom, we engage in activities that have a higher level of sakana than others. Our children ride bicycles, rollerblades, Corkinets, recently hoverboards, and these are all a higher level of sakana than walking. The safest way to go from point of departure to your destination is by walking. That is the method that a Kodesh Boch who tells Avraham Avinu, Kum is Halech Ba'oretz. But no Pesach said you're not allowed to ride a bike. It's safer to sit in a bus than drive a car. Safer to drive a car than a motorcycle. Safer to sit in a Mercedes than in a little Peugeot. But we cannot say that this vehicle is mutter and that vehicle is also. In modern language, it is called a calculated risk. You take all the possible precautions. You don't go on a bike without a helmet. You definitely won't go on a motorcycle without a different type of helmet. And if you sit in a car, you need to need your, use your seat belts. You take every precaution. If you're careful, the Sakona is a very remote one. And it is permissible to get into a remote Sakona just to enjoy life. So both the Noida Behuda and the Tzemach Tzedek, the greatest poiskim 200, 300 years ago, maintain. For Panasa, a person is permitted to put himself in Sakona. Why? How do we know? So the Gemara says, Oda Moira Beirin, Oyelubakevish, Mafres Liam. 
So this posig deals with a poil. And it is from this posig that we learn that a worker is entitled to eat from the fruit he works with. Shasa kotzi, shasa botzi, shasa katif. That is the din of Achilles poyalim. How do we know the posig deals with Achilles poyalim? Kinav shecho. You climb trees to pluck fruit. You sit on a boat and you go out to the ocean to fish, to catch fish. You climb on scaffolds to build houses. So the Noidi Wood and Semach Sedek says, from this sugi we learn that to earn a panasa, you could put your life in Sakana. But I wonder why. Why would that be? You could be a shop owner instead of a fisherman. You could sit in the orphans instead of climbing trees. So why would it be muta? And why don't we ever find in Chazal and the Rambam that at Tzorich Panosa, person could put his life in jeopardy? Ibedi Italia, we're dealing with a very remote Sakana. So you don't go to out to sea when the sea isn't calm. You don't go out when there's a storm. And before you climb a tree, you need to check the branches. Are they strong enough to hold your weight? And if you are careful, there's no reason your life should be besakana. But nevertheless, safer to sit at home than climb trees. People fall out of trees. It happens. And people drown. And both sometimes capsize. Yes, it happens, but it doesn't have to happen. And you have a life worth, vest. So you take all the precautions to prevent Sakana. And then it's muta not only for Panosa, but for many reasons. So people on vacation go bungee jumping, paragliding. They jump off cliffs as if they were birds soaring in the air. Is it muta? Probably so. Accidents happen. It did happen. But they're remote. But if people ask me, would I recommend that? No, I would not. After all, so many things that are enjoyable in life, you don't need to jump off cliffs. It's not only the way to enjoy life. The Svoros of Rabbi Kiveig are very enjoyable. I think Minchasosha is very enjoyable. You don't necessarily need to do bungee jumping. However, is it also? I don't think it's also. Because you take all the precautions and the sakana is remote. So it's impossible to define al pi aloha. What is the level of sakana which is permissible and what is the level which is prohibited? But the seichel yosha dictates the more crucial and important the activity, the more reasonable it would be to permit putting your life in a certain level of jeopardy to achieve that goal. Let me give you an example. Shalosh Tshuvas Mechasosh, first chelik, second chelik. I wrote Kama Vakama Tshuvas, various different Tshuvas, dealing with the question to what level of Zakon is a person entitled or even obligated to expose himself to save another person's life? The relevant question is kidney donations. I am proud of what happens in the Frum community in Israel and in America. We lead the entire world with live kidney donors. I personally know many people that donated kidneys to other people, to other Jews they don't even know, not only to family members. Is it a chiyuv? No, it's not. Is it permissible? Yes, it is. So in my chuvis, my conclusion was it's a midas chasidus. We should never pressure people to donate a kidney. But those that do, it is the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate mesirus nefesh that one could ever have. Giving away an organ. It's more than giving away a million dollars. But we're dealing with it solus nefoshes. To the donor, one cannot say there is no sakana. I'm aware of cases in which a donor died. One of my closest friends is an anesthesiologist, and in his hospital, a donor died one day after donating a kitty when he sat up, and suddenly there was massive blood loss. 
the searches opened up and he was dead within a few minutes. It is very remote. I don't want to scare anyone. But it's total anesthesia. One cannot say there is no sakona. But the sakona is so remote. And the objective is life-saving. And therefore we would encourage people and be thankful if they take this upon themselves to save a life. Another example, in every modern country, people volunteer for missions that do involve a level of sakana, firefighters, rescue divers, the Coast Guard. People jump off helicopters into the stormy sea to save people, save people who are stranded in stormy waters policemen to patrol the streets at night in some cities in America. Recently, Baltimore, I think, tops the list of homicides in America. is more dangerous than sitting in an office. Definitely more dangerous than sitting in Beis Medrash. So another few years, when the Prime Minister in Israel will be a firm Jew, and he might turn to me and say, so should we shut down firefighting services? or rescue divers, or other essential services that do involve a certain level of jeopardy, firefighters sometimes die. We won't send them to their deaths, but it definitely involves a higher level of sakona than many other activities. But we're dealing with saving lives. I brought a riot to this Yisoyed, a very unexpected source, Choshe Mishpet Yubit Beis and Hilchos Dayonim, Loisa guru mipneish that Ambam brings, and the tour, and the sources in Safri. The dying shouldn't say, He might kill my son, he might hurt my family. Talmud loy meloisa guru mipneish. And I say, When the claimant and the defendant, when the tzdodimar, Rablevi Yitzhak Merbadichev on one hand, Rabbi Sol Salanto on the other, the dying has no reason to be afraid. So obviously he needs to judge between mafiosos, between gangsters, between criminals. And he really is afraid they might hurt my family. But the Torah says, So in a modern society, sometimes the police, the FBI, Secret Service, various different arms of the security establishment would have people responsible for the safety of judges and judges were killed in many countries in the world. It happened even in Israel, a judge was murdered by criminals. But this service is so essential if a judge will always be afraid, a dayan will be And that's why the Torah says, So it's a mistake that the more essential the service is, the more hetter there would be to expose yourself to a certain level of sakon. But once again, it is difficult to define exactly. How do we define sakon? So going back to the Rambam again, this is an Issa Diuraisa. It's an Issa Diuraisa to put your life in jeopardy. You need to go out of your way, actively and passively, to prevent Sakana. And when Chazal were metakan takonas, what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do, those are Yisulim Derabonim, Bechayov and Makas Mardus. Because the level of Sakana, Menatoira and Medarabonin, is very difficult to define. There might be one level of Sakana which would be in Isidi or Isa, another which would be in Isidarabonin, and others which would be permissible entirely. But it is clear to me that the mitzvah be a soida is a mitzvah di or Isa. And I once again say, I cannot understand people that are medactic in the mitzvahs. And there's so makbed in digduke halacha, in any other area in Torah. 
And when it comes to pikuach nefesh, they're reckless, irresponsible. And we saw this during the COVID pandemic. Yerei Mayim acted sometimes in such an irresponsible manner. We saw it again in Miran, in Karlin, and in Surfside. How is it that even Yerei Shemayim, when it comes to Benishmar Temoid and Afshaseichem, are not makpid kira'ui? We need to stress this, we need to teach this, it needs to be part of the curriculum. And whenever I speak about this sugi, I just express my frustration. When I see a young yeshiva boha smoking a cigarette, I'm just shocked. And I don't understand. And I think Rosh Hashivas and Admoirim and Rabbonim are a seed in the din. Cigarettes kill people. We know that beyond doubt. This is not a world of ignorance. So I know there's a Chuban in Igis Moshe, and he writes, Shoyim Epesu HaMashem. And the Igis Moshe started Semis, but that was 70 years ago. 70 years ago, we weren't aware as we are today how dangerous and how bad cigarettes are and how they destroy your lungs. The Truma Sadesh and writes, Shoyim Epesu HaMashem is only as long as we're not fully aware of the Sakana. So if you do what everybody does, Kimina Gawailam, and it is a kind of that is not known to people, we say, If people are aware of the Sakana, then this rule does not apply. I don't know one person that started smoking at the age of 20. When you're 20 years old, definitely 25 or 30, you know enough about life to be responsible enough not to smoke. Everyone that smokes started off smoking as a young teenager or as a child before you have enough seichel to understand how bad this is and therefore this should be part of the curriculum, part of what we teach our children. So the Chochmologim will counter-argue and they say, well, eating white flour is bad and eating steak is bad and eating chont is even worse and kartoffel is even worse and, and kugel. You might be right, but that's just for the sake of argument. Don't be stupid, yes. In Minchas Osha and Corona, which is the latest Sefer, it was published just a few months ago, Simon Hay. There's a lengthy Simon in which I quote, many sources in Chazal that we not only have a mitzvah to treat the ill, the sick, we also have a chiv to prevent illness and to adopt a healthy lifestyle. Yes, you should watch what you eat, you should have a healthy diet, you should have some physical activity. You have to care for your health and for your body in preventive measures, not only treating the sick, but trying to prevent illness. And I brought many, many sources. But after all, people need to eat and people need to drink. Your body needs nourishment, your body needs fluids. So yes, vegetables are healthier than bread and carbs. And drinking water is better than drinking Coca-Cola and other soft drinks. But your body needs food and drinks. And as I said before, it's difficult to define the difference between walking by foot and riding a bike or sitting in a car. So it's difficult to define exactly what to eat and what not to eat, but you need to eat and you need to drink. You don't need to smoke cigarettes. There is no benefit in cigarette smoke. It's only a danger. It gives you nothing good and therefore, I think we need to educate our children not to smoke cigarettes. And I'm going back to the bigger picture. Veneshmartem ma'oid renafshaseichem. Ma'oid. Ma'oid, ma'oid. Because the Pusik says twice ma'oid. We do not find this in other mitzvahs. So, as diligent as we are, and we should be, in every mitzvah shabbat Torah, benodem lachaveri, benodem lamokoim. We need to be 
as serious and even more with the mitzvah of Benishmartem Ma'oid Lenafshem Seichem. And I, if I would be Zaycha by saying this year to save one nefesh mi Yisrael, Yehi Zeschori, Hamakayim nefesh achas mi Yisrael, Kilo Kiyem Oilam Molay. I want to go back before I end this year to the Marsha. So the Marsha argues both the Psukim speak about the Neshama and not about life and death, about Ruchnius and not about Gashmius. The Marsha is right, Lefi Pshuto Yishol Mikro, Lo Lefi Droshes Chazal. So what I want to add on is Bena's man and vacation time is not only a time in which our children's lives are in jeopardy, then a Shamas as well. The safest place in the world for a Jewish boy and girl is the base Medrash, the base Knesset, home. When we leave the safeness and the safety of the base Medrash, our lives are at peril. Our Neshamas are at risk. The street today is not what it was many years ago. The moment we leave the base medish, we leave school, we leave our homes, we're putting not only our lives at risk, but our neshamas as well. I always recommend families to go out to Chafesh, to vacation together. Don't send your young boys or young daughters alone with their friends. Sometimes you don't know where they're going and what they're doing and whom they're spending time with. I am very scared about families going to hotels when you have a TV in your room and sometimes your kids are there without their parents and you don't know what they'll be exposed to. It's a dangerous world we live in. We try to build moats around our homes and they're important, but they're never hermetically sealed. We are safe, relatively safe, when we're at home, when we're in Beis Medrash. So Bein Azmanim is a challenging period, but it's a fact of life. It's a fact of life. And it is a minig going back hundreds of years. But try Try to be careful. And don't forget for one moment. Don't put your lives in jeopardy. Don't put your neshamas in jeopardy. So let us all hope that we'll all come safely home. Shalom begif ufoy. Shalom benishmosoi, shalom b'yeras shamayim u'v'yeras chayt. So have a good vacation. It is just the day before yesterday that we sat on the floor and cried in Churban Beis HaMikdosh. And our eyes are already fixed on Rosh Chodesh Elul, coming back in preparation and in trepidation of the Yom Emneroim. So you should all be well, and let us hope that this Ben Asmanam will pass with no tragedy and no mourning and no loss of life. V'yehi ze schoreinu. P'soris toibes Yeshua's v'rachomes, shenes kebel b'yas ha'goyal b'mheiro v'yomeinu. Amen.